Hey everyone, it's Robert Curtis from Distance Calculus at Roger Williams University. I wanted to talk in this video about what you might do with the credits that you can earn from a distance calculus class and how this differs from some other programs that are out there. When you go searching around Google now or whatever search engine you might use, you'll find all kinds of classes for calculus on the internet. And then there's like a whole bunch of free ones. So why don't you just go do a free one? Well, that's the problem. You see, when you do a free one, these are often called MOOCs. And this stands for Massive Open Online Course. And MOOCs are fantastic because they're free. And there are some really famous ones. There's ones from MIT, there's ones from Harvard, there's all kinds of MOOCs and they're free and they're awesome. They're really good, but they're not really any different than a library. A library is free too. And you can go to a library and you can check out a calculus book and you can sit down and read it. And you will learn a lot of calculus that way, but it's not going to get you down the road. So MOOCs have no credits to them. Now, be careful. There are some MOOCs out there who say, you know, we'll give you a certificate. Um, and it depends. I mean, if where you're going actually accepts that certificate, which they probably don't, you have to check with them. Some, some schools are starting to do this, but by and large, if you find yourself looking at a free course, then there's not going to be any credits available. Why do you need the credits? Uh, because what you really want when you do a calculus course is that you want an academic transcript. That's really the goal. An academic transcript that says you finished calculus. You finished calculus one, calculus two, multivariable calculus, linear algebra, differential equations, all the way up the sequence of the lower division calculus sequence. Academic transcripts. Now distance calculus operates through Roger Williams University. And that's in Providence, Rhode Island, right? So it's very important that if you're based in the United States that you seek credits from a United States based school. Now there are great schools around the world, don't get me wrong, they're fantastic schools of course, but trying to transfer credits from a foreign university into the United States, well once again sometimes it's okay and sometimes it's not. So, you know, if you went to Berlin Polytechnic, you're probably going to have an easier time transferring those credits into another degree program. But, you know, you have to watch out for this stuff. So there are some online courses that uh, operate through universities that are outside the U.S. It's important to choose a U.S.-based um, uh, university to do an online calculus credit course. Also, what you might do with the credits, let's take a look at that. What you might do with the credits here is uh, you might be working on your BA, on your bachelor's degree, and so you might be already enrolled in a degree program at a university. And what you might want to do with these distance calculus courses is you might want to transfer those into your BA program because whatever BA you might be doing, you might be doing, you might be doing math, but you're probably doing another uh, related science. You might be in pre-med, you might be in economics, you might be studying business, and a lot of those majors require calculus. Now, you may have taken calculus at your bachelor's degree school, Maybe you did well, maybe you didn't, uh, maybe you need to take it again. These are all common scenarios for students in distance calculus, but the important thing when you're in a bachelor's degree program, you need to ask them. It's so very important that you ask your degree program. You can approach the department that you're in or the registrar at your school and just say, I want to take this distance calculus course through Roger Williams University. 
if I complete that course, will you accept those credits? Now the answer usually is yes, but sometimes that answer is no. And you have to abide by the rules of your bachelor's degree program. Some schools have rules about taking online courses. Some schools have rules about the last year of courses for your degree program have to come from that school specifically. So if you're a senior, you can't run out and go take some courses and then transfer them in to apply to your degree program. It's called the senior requirement, the senior year requirement. But the way around this is simply just to ask, ask up front. Our students always do this 95% of the time the answer is yes, they're happy, their home institution is happy because they were asked. There was a pre-ask before you enrolled to make sure everybody's on board with your plan. All right. The trouble that some students get into is they don't ask, they finish a distance calculus course, and then they go ask. And then, you know, maybe it's yes, maybe it's no, it's, it can be trouble. So I always advise students, ask first before you enroll. Now, you might have completed a bachelor's degree and you might be going for an MA or a higher degree or an MBA. And what you have when you're going for an MA or an MBA is that you have the very important application to these programs. Very important application. Now, when you're applying to a program for an MA or an MBA, they may have requirements that they actually say you need to have calculus, and they might not say it. They might just say, well, you, you apply, and we'll look at your transcripts, we'll look at your academic record, and then we'll make a decision. So not all of the, the uh, graduate degree programs will actually be specific that you need calculus, but, the more classes that you have to go into your portfolio to show that you're a pretty smart cookie is going to help your application move forward and get accepted, which is your goal when you're applying. So it's a good thing to look at your, uh, at your academic record and say, you know, would it be good if I had multivariable calculus? I'm going to go do an MBA. Uh, I'm going to go do a master's degree in economics. I'm going to go do a master's degree in finance. What classes, I mean, it doesn't say that I have to have these classes, but maybe it might be a good idea. The more math classes I can show on my record, this school is going to look at my application more favorably. And we have a lot of students enrolled in distance calculus who are exactly in that boat. They're taking these classes, not because there's a specific requirement. Sometimes there is, and sometimes there's no requirement, but they're trying to improve their overall undergraduate um, academic transcripts so that they can apply to these degrees. And, you know, maybe in your bachelor's degree, you might have done a degree that wasn't quite in the field you're looking to go to graduate school. This happens the most in economics. Students don't do a bachelor's degree in economics, they might do a bachelor's degree in, in something maybe related, maybe unrelated. Maybe you did your bachelor's degree in biology. Uh, biology generally doesn't have a whole lot of calculus, but you say, well, now I want to go do a master's degree and I'm interested in finance or I'm interested in an MBA. and all of a sudden you're looking at your transcript and even though you did a degree in a science, you may not have a whole lot of math to go with it. And it's really, it looks better in your application. When you have more mathematics, you build up more mathematics. Now, is the purpose of taking a distance calculus course just to improve your academic transcripts? No, it's, it is a benefit of the distance calculus program that you earn real credits from Roger Williams University, a US based, real university, physical university, and it's regionally accredited. And you can transfer those credits everywhere uh, by mutual agreements with you know, universities all around the country for bachelor's degrees, but you don't actually transfer the credits to an MA or an MBA usually. Usually what you do is just earn these credits to improve your application portfolio for um, uh, proving that you have a very solid math background. Now, 
Does this help you in your graduate studies? I mean, that's really the point, isn't it? It's not just, you know, grabbing some more credits, right? No, it really does. If you're going into uh, something that uses finance, something that uses data science, um, you know, programming, uh, all it all comes back to math. We all know this, right? We all try to stay away from math and say, ah, I'm done taking math. I don't want to take any more. But you know that all of those degree programs, especially in the new economy of the internet, of high tech, it's all math based. And so the more uh, proof that you have, that you have a strong math background, the better your applications and your job progress. Maybe you're in a job and you wanna prove that you're ready for that promotion. And the way to do it is by earning academic credits as opposed to saying, well, I got a certificate from this MOOC over here. I sat through and I watched 20 lectures and I did a couple of math problems and you know, here I got this little certificate. That's not going to cut it uh, if you're actually trying to prove a, a, an academic chain of transcripts uh, like is available through distance calculus. All right, so this is just what a lot of students use the credits for. Um, we also have a large number of students who are in high school. And in high school, generally, you take, um, you take calculus AB. That is equivalent to calculus 1. And sometimes you might also take BC, which is equivalent to calculus 2. Very, very few uh, high schools offer anything above Calculus 1 and Calculus 2. We get many, many high school students who are very good students. And they have finished all of their high school calculus and they want to take more before they start their bachelor's degree. Distance Calculus is an excellent way to do this because when you take the credits through Roger Williams University, then it's not that you transfer them into the high school. You're not transferring them back to the high school. You're going off to a master's degree, or a bachelor's degree, I mean, and those credits from distance calculus go right into, almost always, you don't even have to ask. They always, almost always, I say almost because you never know, but they almost always take all the credits that you earn before you start a bachelor's degree if you have additional bachelor's credits. They're very, very accepting of that kind of thing. It's when you've started the bachelor's degree that you have to make sure you ask. But when you're transferring in on the first day of your bachelor's degree, then if you have completed three, four, five, six uh, college level classes, university level classes, they will accept them very readily much more readily um, than necessarily in if you're already enrolled in that bachelor's degree. So we get many, many high school students who take the advanced levels, multivariable calculus, differential equations, linear algebra, probability theory, are extremely popular with these high school students. They might be in their senior year of, uh, of high school. They finished calculus their junior year, which is not uncommon, and then they want to take they want to keep going, and this is an excellent way for them to keep going. It's not disruptive to their high school schedule. They just take the class as if they were a working adult. They might take it at night. They might work on it on the weekends, at night, and it doesn't in interfere with their high school activities. And then they transfer those credits by academic transcript into their bachelor's degree. Many of our students who do this, it's so wonderful, right? They start their freshman year in college and they're done with calculus. I mean, isn't that cool? You just start and you say, well, no, I already took all of my calculus. I took it when I was in high school. I finished differential equations, linear algebra. I did it all. And they go, great. And then you get to start junior level math or physics or uh, economics or whatever. You get to just start with the really great classes and you get to watch your friends you know, who are maybe living in the dorms with you and they're having to take those freshman classes, which it's okay, but they're usually pretty large classes and you know, not, not, the, not the most favored classes to take as a freshman. It's so much cooler when you get to start taking the more advanced classes right on the first day. So these are some ways that our students use the credits they earn through Roger Williams University to uh, 
both work with their bachelor's degrees and prepare for masters and MBAs. If you have any questions, please reach out to me on chat or email. This is Robert Curtis from Roger Williams University, Distance Calculus. We'll see you later.